inside my swag bag is what's really interesting.
sacrifice it takes to achieve this, the people skills you have to have, the leadership skills you have to muster, it's amazing to hit this, but what's really required to hit silver? Perseverance. All of those things, all of those things. The great products, the passion, the vision, all those things are amazing and got you here today. We've identified working with some outside consultants. You guys know Darren Hardy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what the compound effect, you all got to copy that. We've identified some of the key traits that individuals possess that reach this rank and what they have to magnify to get to diamond. And remember, these traits are individual. Yesterday at the the farm, I talked about what's required of a team, a high performance team. Do you remember Project Aristotle? Who can tell me the three things that are required based on the research done at Google? Hold on, she's, she's standing up. The second, alignment with a goal, and the third is connection to a higher purpose. That's what the team needs. Today we're talking about what individuals need, the five key leadership traits. Number one, confidence. Confidence. Certainty in what we have, what we possess as a company, how it can change lives, and the conviction to carry that in the hearts of other people. People's pocketbooks aren't tied to their brains. What are they tied to? Their hearts. Their hearts. They're tied to storytelling. It's hard in a, in a post-compliance world to share some of those stories, even though I heard one up here. 
Love it. But we can still tell those stories in, in different ways, and we can refer people to Google to help us illustrate those stories. But the confidence and conviction that we've earned from an embodied knowledge of what these products do. You guys know what embodied knowledge is? Ed Daly talks about that, one of our global trainers. It's using a different product once a week, researching it, sharing it, doing everything you can around that one product called lavender. Just one thing for one week. At the end of 52 weeks, one year, what do you have an embodied knowledge of? 52 different products. The conviction and the confidence and certainty to share those. You know Coach K, Duke University? Any Duke fans here? Kentucky fans? Which is a, which is a better team, Todd? <laughs> Coach K said confidence. He said this about confidence. Even if you believe your team is going to lose or win, your team only sees a face of winning no matter what. You set the tone for your entire team. You are always on stage now, always. And they are watching you. They're watching your body language. They're watching your facial expressions. They're listening to your words and the emotion behind your words. And if they detect a lack of confidence, they too will have what? A lack of confidence. Human beings are natural mimics. It's how we learn to speak as, as infants. We mimic, we watch, we observe. It's more powerful than listening. So you have to demonstrate confidence, even when you're shutting the door in your house and crying alone. The second you walk out of that office or that bedroom, you are strong. I have to do this at corporate, and I expect our corporate leaders to do this, to show confidence, because it sends that strong message to the rest. Number two, inspiration. You must seek to find what inspires you. Because if you're inspired, it will be a contagion that will spread to other people. Is it a certain product? product? Is it a, a healing story? Is it Gary's story? Is it someone who you love who shared this opportunity? Is it the farm story? Whatever it is, find out what that is and dig deep into that source of inspiration so you can inspire others. You must be purveyors of hope. Hope in a better day when there are obstacles, shipping delays, a product is out of stock. It's okay. You can be optimistic about this. We'll overcome this. Not every company is perfect. We'll figure this out. Conveying that ties into the first principle, right? Confidence. Passion ties into inspiration 100%. When you speak words with passion behind those words, what does it do? It propels them directly into the hearts of people. Passion is everything. Gary Young didn't know about any of these principles when he started this company. He lived them intrinsically, it's who he was. Third, authenticity. You must be real, you must be vulnerable. And Gary, once again, manifested this attribute the best. He started from nothing. He was, he, he grew up in an abusive household with no money, no opportunity, no education. And because of his commitment to being who he was and standing on his principles, which he believed were God-given, he knew he could do anything. Despite detractors, despite physical disability, despite betrayal from copycats. Yes! Gary stood on his authenticity and he hired me because he knew I would not be afraid to do this and he hired our executive team because we are people who align behind the vision of this company and we are not afraid to speak the truth and be who we are. And we know that aligns with all of you too. Number four, intuitive. This isn't an intuitive leadership principle, but it's so important. This is having the emotional quotient, the EQ, the emotional intelligence to be able to read your team, to know what they're going through, to be able to, this ties in the last slide, to be vulnerable, to share your weaknesses, it's okay to be flossome, to fall forward and to make mistakes. Even at corporate, we talk about how we want to create a spirit of innovation in corporate. And if you're innovating, you're gonna make some mistakes and that's okay, we want people to, to have the power to do that. Are you watching your team? Are you paying attention to the vibes of your team? Do you know when someone's suffering? Do you know when someone's experiencing an obstacle? 
Is your team full of patriots for you, Leto? Loyalists? Or do you have some mercenaries in there? Mercenaries are consumers who come for the money, the short-term gain, right? Patriots are lifelong fans. Can you convert those mercenaries to be patriots? Are you aware of what's going on? Are you prophetic to their needs? You guys know this. That's why women leave this business because these traits are natural to you. Dudes, we got to learn about this. I got one guy at the farm yesterday who hit silver on his own. <laughs> that was the big deal, where is he? He's out there somewhere. But there was a whole movie, he's over there. <laughs> Thing. All right, recognition. We talk about this a lot 
at corporate, and this event is part of that. We are trying to love bomb you through the farm visits, through the swag, through the trainings today, through the interactions we have one on one with you. We're love bombing you. We're showing you how much we care about you. We're making you the hero of the story because you are. I'm telling you, make your people heroes. Make them the heroes of your group's narrative. Love bomb them, especially when they come in. We have this premium surrogate cell. A lot of people are coming in right now. Don't neglect them the second they enroll. Love bomb them for 90 days, for six months, for 12 months. Take them out to lunch. Walk them through the oils. Have the patience and love to invest in these people. Make them your heroes. And if you make them your heroes, what will happen? They'll stay. They'll stay. And they will love you. And you'll create something magnificent and beautiful. People work harder for praises than raises. Write that down. People work harder for praises than raises. We apply these principles at corporate. These are your universal, not just the field. Are we doing a good job of making you feel like heroes? And if you have any feedback, please talk to our staff about how we can do a better job of love bombing each of you. We had our global leadership meeting yesterday at the medieval village at the farm. And we had all of our country managers, general managers, and regional presidents from all of our open markets around the world on, on, on the conference call. And every month we choose one corporate staff member to love bomb. Yesterday, we love bombed Kristen Todd, the GM of Canada and New Zealand. Clap your hands if you're from Australia and New Zealand. There's a few. Do you love Kristen? A lot of other network marketing companies are shutting their doors and pulling out of Australia. They can't succeed. We have three years of consecutive 35% growth. In we just opened New Zealand and we opened up an experience center in Perth on the other side of the continent. But we wanted to recognize Kristen and so we love bombed her. We all took turns giving her shout outs. Things we had noticed. Notice people doing the right thing. And we, and we love bombed her. She wore a pink dress and I remember her face was just as pink by the end. And she was smiling from ear to ear. Take time to recognize your team members. In, month, in your monthly calls, in your weekly calls, I know you all, a lot of you already do this because you're sitting here today. But think of ideas to make your people heroes. <clears throat> These five leadership capabilities combined with the project Aristotle I talked about yesterday are the foundation for what I'm going to talk about next. And that is taking young living to the next level. We believe, I believe, we can be a force for change and good for billions of people. Not just the 5.6 million we have today. We know we can reach every household and fulfill Gary's dream if we apply what we've talked about. And this is the foundation business plan for that. This is our five-year pledge to you, to us, to Gary's vision, and to the world. How many of you have seen the five-year pledge? We pushed it out on some social media. In the next five years, and every executive at the company has signed this pledge, including Mary. In the next five years, we have one powerful pledge to accomplish five amazing things. If we do this, every single one of you in this room will be a Royal Crown Diamond without question. <laughs> and I want you to clap for what makes you the most excited out of these five key performance indicators. Number one, and by the way, can you see that great atum ferociter at the top? It's a Latin phrase. Who knows what it means? Great atum ferociter means step by step, ferociously. <laughs> step by step, ferociously, we will get oils into every home on earth. Number one, notice our top goal has nothing to do with money. None of these goals have anything to do with money for corporate. We're not built on a foundation of profit. We're built on a foundation of love, like I talked to you about yesterday. Our movement starts from the heart. Number one, empower five times more people through the Young Living Foundation. We impact, 
We impact 250,000 mostly children right now. But this will allow us to impact 1.2 million. These are our little boys we rescue from an 18 year life expectancy in the slums of Kampala, Uganda. These are little girls we rescue from sex trafficking in Cambodia. These are the poorest of the poor in Chongon, Ecuador, our, often our farm workers' children who attend our Young Living Academy. These are the homeless we help here in Utah. These are the people in the world who deserve love, who deserve our commitment to help them live better lives as well. You agree? <laughs> you know I have to be very honest about this. Number two, achieve zero waste as a company within five years as stewards of the earth. What does this mean? We reduce, reuse, and recycle everything. The farming byproduct, the chips we recycle, at the distillation, have y'all been to a farm? You know how we have chips that come out? We're turning those chips through a proprietary process at Mona, and then we're gonna expand elsewhere into soil, into peat. So the chips will go back into the soil that we form organically to bring you the oils that you need. On top of this, to offset our company's carbon footprint requires 10.6 thousand acres of trees. Right now between our Australia sandalwood farm, our Hawaii sandalwood farm, Northern Lights, and our farms in Idaho, we're getting pretty close. Our goal in this is to be a carbon neutral company in five years also. That's a huge thing. We're moving into our new building. Did you see it on the freeway as you drove down? That building is Green Globe certified and LEED certified, the only building in the state of Utah with double environmental certifications. We want to lead in every way. Wellness, purpose, abundance, and making our planet a better place. Next, reach five million additional households in five years. 5 million additional households. This is all of you. And this is us providing you the tools, know-how, education, inspiration to be able to reach those households. Next, develop at least five new corporate and partner farms per year for the next five years. <clears throat> we have 18 right now. This allows us to secure the oils you'll need for the future when we're in all these homes. And it allows you more visit, uh, abilities to visit the farms to get your hands dirty. We want you to plant the lavender, to harvest the lavender, to distill it, and to take that sacred little bottle of oil back to your families, knowing exactly and transparently where it came from. What other company offers that kind of transparency? Honestly. None. This is a huge deal in today's world. Vertically integrated farming that's totally transparent. And we'll add more and more and more to that portfolio. <coughs> Next, this is exciting for you. Open a minimum of five new markets per year for the next five years. And I'm gonna tell you what the five are next year. Do you wanna hear them? And I'm gonna tell you because I want you to start preparing to go into these places. So in the world of social media, there are no boundaries. The world is flat, correct? So you can do this. Number one, Brazil. Colombia is a mix of this year and next year. There's our Colombia. She cried when she heard it yesterday. Macau. I'll cheer for Macau. <laughs> Panama. <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> our, our first opening in Africa will be South Africa. Very exciting. What did I miss, Todd? That was fun. And South Korea. <laughs> Somebody tried to throw Peru in there. Peru will come eventually. What other countries do you want us to open? India? No, it's Jamaica. Jamaica. I love that. No, it's Russia? Trinidad? You're just, you're just throwing islands you want to go to. Where? Yes. You know what's interesting? There's a group booming in the Cayman Islands. Anyone here from that group? You? No, oh, she was stretching. <laughs> anyway, you see these clusters of people all over the world who are embracing us. This is our five-year pledge. Can you agree today to help us accomplish this in partnership? 
Good afternoon with all of you. I'd like to end on this note. This is a, a, a painting based on a photograph I took. I was up at Highland Flats Tree Farm at our winter harvest. How many of you participated in that experience? It's awesome, isn't it? You go up there, you cut down the balsam fir, the blue spruce, we pull them out with horses, and then in the spring we go back and we replant those trees, right? Cycle of life. But this is the first time we distill blue spruce. And we were all exhausted from a day of harvesting. The snow was up to our knees. Gary has us on these machines all day and all night. Swathers and I don't even know what they're called. Cutters and all these things. <clears throat> but Gary wasn't there for dinner. And the camp cook couldn't find him. And she said, hey, JT, will you go look for Gary? So I go look all over the camp. I couldn't find him. I look out at the distillery and I see a little light on so I threw on my, my boots and my coat and I waded out through the snow. It's like 11 o'clock at night. And I walked down through the distillery, past the cookers, and dropped down the stairwell to where the separator is, where you can see there. And there was Gary sitting on a barrel, staring at this blue spruce oil with the biggest smile I've ever seen <clears throat> by himself. And I thought, this captures the magic of him and the magic of us. This sense of childlike curiosity. He's seen that 100,000 times in his decades of oil distillation. But every new distillation was just as exciting as the first. And he had this grin, and I took that picture, and then we had that painted, and gave it to Gary a couple of conventions ago. And that's hanging in our will call. But that's the heart of the man who we tie our legacy back to, Gary. And I would challenge all of you to never lose your sense of childlike curiosity that got you here that first experience you had when you opened that valor, when you had that diffuse, do you remember that feeling? The first time you were healed and you saw someone else be healed from something? Cherish that, don't forget that. Let that empower you and your teams to push you to the next level. Sound good? Okay. I have the incredible honor to introduce our next speaker. Young Living has a new brand ambassador who you may have heard of. She has been the public eye for 20 years, starring first in the 90s in a series called Sister, Sister. And she is an icon now, has 12 million followers on her different, different social media platforms. But what her passion is, and the reason we have partnered with Tia Mowry, is because she loves oils. She is part of our tribe, and Tia and I struck up a conversation on Twitter messaging four years ago that has led to her becoming a brand ambassador for our company today. She's a mother of two, Cree and Cairo, who are little oilers, and she's passionate about our company. Without further ado, I would love to welcome to the stage our newest brand ambassador, Tia Maori. <laughs> 